Now let's go ahead and have a look at the saprophytic nutrition. Okay, now these are organisms that feed on dead organisms or non-living organic matter. They are called saprophytes. And examples of that, we have the fungi mucor, the rhizopus, bacteria, and the mushroom. Okay, I have pictures here at the bottom. So what saprophytes do, they secrete enzymes, which are similar to what we have. They also have amylases, lipases, and proteases. But they digest their food extracellularly. They don't need to ingest it. And the absorption will just happen through cell surface. Let's see here an example. If we ever tried to just leave a, leave a piece of bread inside the container and then check it after a few weeks, you'll see, oh, there's a bread mold. And that's now called a mucor. So what happens? How will it obtain its nutrients? Number one, the rhizoids, they release enzyme to the bread. And then enzymes digest complex organic molecules in bread into simpler soluble molecules. So a bread is a carbohydrate, so it's going to break it down into simpler substances to the saccharides until monosaccharides, so those simple sugars. And then the digested products are absorbed by the rhizoids. Right? That's how they do it. So why are they important in the environment? What purpose do they serve? Would it be okay if we existed without saprophytes? Why or why not? Why do you think so? Alright. They are important because they allow essential materials to be recycled in the ecosystem. So they play a very important role. 